Good evening, everybody, on this Saturday night. Uh, first things first. Not staged. My first one. Cheers. Oh, that is good. Spotted cow from Wisconsin. Um, I'm not getting paid to endorse it, but fuck, this is a good beer. Alrighty. Um, just took in Chris Weidman. Uh, and his win. This is a recap of the fight. It is a way for us to discuss everything, not only through this video, but also in the comments section. Uh, we are not allowed to show highlights, so I cannot stress that enough. If you haven't seen it yet, uh, go watch it, come back, leave a comment. Uh, please do me a favor, subscribe to the channel. We're trying to do more and more content as well, uh, and give this video a thumbs up. There's a few things prior. Uh, Alex Oliveira, um, in his win against Ryan LaFlair, he said that it was going to be, excuse me, easy work. It was not easy in the first round, and then you saw the knockout of the night, arguably, you could say, by Alex Oliveira. And he maybe proved that it was easy work. Just a short, quick, tight, concise, yet beautiful right hand from Alex Oliveira. So that was a tremendous finish. Probably going to get fined because in New York, the octagon, uh, 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 the cause and effect is that you are certainly going to get docked a few dollars here and there. Uh, Jimmy Rivera and Thomas Almeida, man, what a fight. Uh, Thomas Almeida continually taking heavy shots for bantamweights. Jimmy Rivera is an incredibly hard puncher. A stout puncher is what I heard on the broadcast, and he certainly was, holding heavy hands at bantamweight. And yet Almeida took it over and over and over and over again. And I was surprised with how game Thomas Almeida was. Jimmy Rivera got the win. It was a three-round decision. But man, that was a heck of a fight, so I was impressed with that. Uh, the story of the night was Junior Albini KOing uh, Timothy Johnson. He won nine straight fights got paid as much as you and I got paid to fight. He got nothing. Zilch. Nada. Now, I want to do a separate video just because his story is so incredible. But uh, the skinny is that he didn't get paid for those nine fights. He got paid more tonight than he has ever gotten paid in his career. And it was heartbreaking to hear him being interviewed by MMAfighting.com and uh, notably Ariel Hawani, GOAT, uh, G-O-A-T, uh, that... His daughter, he could finally afford to give his daughter toys and pay for toys because the toys that she was playing with were empty shampoo bottles. Uh, if you think you had it bad, it could always get worse, but uh, good for Junior Albany for getting that win. All right, the main event tonight, Chris Weidman, Kelvin Gastelum. Uh, Gastelum coming up in weight. He defeated Vitor Belfort, defeated Tim Kennedy. I know that... Uh, the win against Kennedy turned into a no contest. He tested positive for the worst steroid of them all, Mary Jane. But nonetheless, uh, Weidman controlled the first round. Uh, his wrestling was great, sticking to his strengths, <clears throat> not trying to trade, which is what got him in a hole. Towards the end of the round, I don't know how many seconds were left. I, I saw the quote that Gaslam said to the media, if he had another 30, the fight would have ended, and I agree with him. Chris Weidman got dropped, and the speed was real with Calvin Gastelum, who was coming up from welterweight because he failed. Uh, it was becoming more and more difficult for him to make weight, and he went up to middleweight, and the speed was evident. If this turned into a striking trading contest, Gastelum would have won. If, as he said, 30 more seconds were on the clock, Gastelum would have won. The second round, it was all Chris Weidman maintaining top position. Again, sticking to his strengths and not pigeonholing himself to deteriorate what could have been a horrible loss as he had lost three straight previously and starting his MMA career at 13-0. And, and obviously, we know about the great wins back-to-back -back with Anderson Silva and yet losing to Yoel Romero. Uh, I know he defeated Vitor Belfort as well. We know what Vitor Belfort is at this point. But losing to other fighters, 
uh, and, and the wins that he had on his resume, this would have been a horrible loss. Uh, there's an argument that the UFC would have dropped him if he were to lose four straight. Uh, debate for another day. But then in third round, this is what crushed Kelvin Gastelum was that he just wasn't big enough. If he didn't exhaust himself by defending uh, takedown after takedown, where I believe Chris Weidman was above 70% in this fight. At one point, he was 7 to 10, 5 to 7 and 7 to 10. If he were bigger, and this is these are all ifs, I know, but if Gaslam were bigger, maybe he wouldn't have been dominated so heavily on the ground. But that was Chris Weidman's strength. That's been his strength. And he did it once again tonight as he defeated Kelvin Gaslam uh, via submission. Now, there's a lot to take in after the fight as well. He called out Michael Bisping, and here's what he said. Well, firstly, he said this to everybody. Yo, keep doubting me, people. I know Long Island ain't doubting me because the fight, of course, was at Nassau Coliseum. But these other dudes around the world, keep doubting me. I dare you. Some of those doubts even came from this Bleacher Report, uh, 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 Bleacher Report article that said, Is Chris Weidman done? Look, a lot of people thought it. I know that his family probably thought uh, the opposite, and he thought the opposite, and many others. But when you have such an incredible career leading up to this point, and then you have this really harsh, and this is just the reality of the UFC, for how high they rise, they fall even harder. And it happened with Chris Weidman. So articles like these aren't necessarily to shame those outlets. It's to say we all were there. We all thought about it. The thought crossed our mind over and over and over again as he lost that many fights in a row. So here's then what he said after stating that. Uh, that British bum, as in Michael Bisping, who is crying in his freaking house right now. I'm back, baby. I'm back. What's up? Stop hiding from the real men. Let's go, baby. I'm the champ and everyone knows it. And then MMA Fighting put this out. Bisping has been running, uh, according to Chris Weidman. I gave him that shot. Since then, he hasn't fought a number one contender. I don't know what he's doing. For all of the wins that Chris Weidman has had, this is the one that could potentially turn around his career. Now, I'm not saying that it will, okay? I'm saying that it has potential. And here's why. I throw it as part. Just like the wussiest word you could say in a UFC clip. I don't know if I saw vintage Chris Weidman. I saw good Chris Weidman. I saw good Chris Weidman taking on a dangerous opponent who was very solid, who was up and coming, but who was small for this fight. The speed was there. The power was there for Gastelum. But when it came down to it, he was not big enough to defend takedown after takedown. He got put on his back forced up against the cage, and he lost. He lost to Chris Weidman. But there are still a lot of factors to Weidman's game that are red flags. I don't know if he can compete with the best of the best at middleweight as he is the number five contender. I just don't know. But Michael Bisping did have a response. Say my name, bitch, at Chris Weidman UFC. Well, now that's a... Nice little rivalry that's going on. He's not going to face Chris Weidman, though. He is going to face uh, Robert Whitaker, which should still be a hell of a fight. But the question is, if this thing loses, does he then fight Chris Weidman? Or would you like to see him fight Chris Weidman right now? Look, what we saw from Chris Weidman tonight, again, not vintage, but he did fight well against you all Romero, and then Romero put it on him when he had to. I believe in Chris Weidman at Nassau Coliseum. I believe in him to potentially fight someone else, not named Michael Bisping. I still saw some lacks defensively, uh, so, some lacking parts of his game defensively, especially against Calvin Gastelum, who said this after the fight, I feel like 170 is my home. I need to reassess some things, change my lifestyle a bit. I'm going to the UFC Performance Institute. So what do we believe? Do we believe that we have seen the best Chris Weidman and he just happened to fight a guy that was inserted who is, granted, up and coming, undersized for this fight? Or do you believe that this is the fight that could turn around his entire career and he could potentially drop and beat Michael Bisping and he could potentially beat others in the middleweight division, the stacked middleweight division? Let me know your thoughts. Get at me in the comments section below. Subscribe to TYT Sports and get at me on Twitter at Rick Strom. Let's keep the conversation going.
Cheers. 